Shipman and the number two seeded Holy Cross Crusaders. Luke Gillingham beginning to throw his warm-up pitches on the mound. Let's get you the starting lineups for each team. We'll start first with the visiting Holy Cross Crusaders. Leading off will be the shortstop Nick Lovello, batting second, the second baseman Cam O'Neill. First baseman Anthony Critelli hits third. Batting in the cleanup spot will be the left fielder Bill Schlick. Hitting DH will be the will be Travis Clonely. He bats fifth. Hitting sixth will be the right fielder John Hassel. Third baseman Thomas Russo bats seventh. Hitting eighth will be the catcher Alex Wojtek. And batting ninth will be the center fielder Bobby Indeglia. And that lineup will again be going up against the left-hander Luke Gillingham. On the other side for the home midshipmen, we'll get you their starting lineup. In the leadoff spot as normal will be the center fielder Robert Curry. Travis Blue, the shortstop, will hit second. Batting number third will be Stephen Bourne, the DH. In the cleanup spot will be the left fielder, Sean Trent. Right fielder, Connor Deneen, bats fifth. Hitting sixth, the first baseman, Leland Sale. Hitting seventh will be the catcher, Adrian Chinnery. Matthew Wilcox, the second baseman, hits eighth. And batting ninth will be the third baseman, Logan Knowles, with again Luke Gillingham, two-time Patriot League pitcher of the year on the mound. Tough outing for him last week, three and a third innings. He gave up seven runs in that ballgame. And, Sean, we look at Gillingham, such good seasons for him the last two years. What's the scouting report here on Gillingham? Well, number one, Luke's going to command both sides of the plate with his fastball. I think that's what we will see from him when, when he's had a successful days. And I'm sure last week it had a little bit more to do with command than anything. He also has a changeup, a cutter. He really just has the whole repertoire of pitches. And, and for me, the first thing I'll be looking at is how, how is his command today? So Nick Lavello will lead things off the shortstop here for Holy Cross. Tough season for him at the plate. Hit 224 overall on the season. Four home runs and 25 runs batted. And a guy who had a couple of pretty good years in 2014 and 2015, but just couldn't get it going at the plate. As he lifts that one in the air to center field, Robert Curry will retreat on it, make the catch, and Gillingham tires the first batter of the ball game. It's a big out for, for uh, Gillingham there. Lavolo, as, as much as his numbers don't indicate it this year, he's a spark plug of that team, much like Curry for Navy. And so keeping him off the bases will be a, will be a key, uh, key factor for Navy all weekend. The concern for Gillingham last week and over the last couple of weeks that he had thrown was that that velocity had been down for him. But you've seen him the last couple of years, such a smart pitcher, a guy that really doesn't necessarily need the velocity to have success. When he has it, he's virtually unhittable. I mean, I've seen him in the upper 80s, touching the low 90s, and with that same command at our level, he honestly has had the ability to kind of dominate uh, most lineups in the Patriot League. And this year it's a little bit down, but as you'll see today, if he's got his command, he has such a feel for pitch, and he's, he's quite, quite honestly one of the best pitchers I've seen in the Patriot League in my 20-plus 20, 20 years involved with the league. So the left-hander Gillingham facing two batter in the lineup, Cam O'Neill, sophomore. It's that pitch outside, and it's two balls and one strike. O'Neill, pretty good season, 286 batting average, a home run, 33 runs batted, and riding a 22-game hitting streak, though, coming into this game. So he's gotten hot late in the season. Yeah, freshman rookie of the year last year for, for Holy Cross and had a tough start, but, boy, the last half of this season, he's been he's just been one of their go-to guys, and certainly last weekend um, he had a, uh, a terrific weekend, and I didn't realize he was on a 22-game hitting streak, but I'm not surprised where he's swinging the bat. That ball down in the dirt, so a full count here for Gillingham. Holy Cross team that able to work a lot of deep counts against your team last week. Not to bring up the bad memories, that pitch lifted in the air out towards left field. Trent going back on it and just shy of the warning track. He's there to make the catch, so two up and two down. For Gillingham last week, he was able to get a 1-2-3 first inning against in that against Bucknell in the semifinals and then things kind of went downhill for him after that so he's retired the first two batters here in the top half of the first inning Anthony Critelli the first baseman will come to the plate it's interesting that fly ball there seemed to carry quite a bit I, I know sometimes we're here and it's it's a it's a pretty big park but that ball looked off the bat maybe right at Trent and he had to take a few steps back to almost to the track to make that play first pitch here to Critelli up in the zone it's Critelli a guy who hit 272 on the season nine home runs 40 runs batted in as he pops that one up out towards shallow right field. Deneen Wilcox converging on it. It's Deneen who will call for it. He makes the catch. Three fly ball outs for Gillingham here in the top of the first inning. He works a 1-2-3 inning. No runs hits errors. Nobody left on base after half an inning of play. Holy Cross doesn't score. Navy coming to bat. 
And welcome back out to Annapolis. You're watching today's contest on the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. Patriot League Championship Series Game 1. Yesterday washed out because of the rain on and off rain today as well. But right now, clear conditions, not really any precipitation, maybe a little bit of a miss, but really the best weather that we've had over the last couple of days here is again on the Patriot League Network as Brendan King finishing throwing his warm-up pitches. Ben, ben Gordon Goldstein, Sean Leary back with you. One, two, three, top of the first inning for Luke Gillingham. And now in the bottom half of the first inning, it'll be Brendan King, seven and two in the regular season, 307 earned run average. And Sean, a guy that you saw against your team, 126 pitches last week for him. Absolute bulldog. I, I was super impressed with uh, with him the last two times we've seen him, but the last Saturday he just went out and, and, and got them into the ninth inning. And you'll see today he's going to command the fastball, same like Luke, to both sides of the plate. A uh, little better velocity maybe, uh, was upper 80s, low 90s versus us, and, and it'll be a key for him today as well, just kind of harnessing that emotion, that excitement, the intensity for this weekend, and if he commands ball, we're going to have a pretty low scoring game today. So Robert Curry will be the first one to face him here. 364 batting average overall in the season. He hits that one in the air out towards right field. John Hassel will go back on it. He's there to make the catch and one away here in the bottom half of the first inning. Set up the defense for Holy Cross in the outfield. Bill Schlick is in left field. Bobby Indeglia in center and John Hassel. Josh Hassel, excuse me, is the right fielder. In the infield, Thomas Russo's over at third. Nick Lavello, the shortstop. Cam O'Neill at second. Anthony Critelli at first. And behind the plate, catching Brendan King, is the catcher, Alex Wojtek. As Travis Blue will stand in. And first pitch to a misses inside, and it's 1-0. So Brendan King, as you mentioned last week, eight innings of one-run ball, or three-run ball, rather, against your team. Nine strikeouts, one walk. Seven hits as that one misses inside, and it's two balls and no strikes. What makes him so tough out there on that on the mound? Well, number one, I, I mentioned earlier, he, he has a, a mentality. You watch his presence out there, just poise. You kind of a, he kind of has that attack mat, um, mentality, but he'll pitch inside, and a lot of guys don't don't do that effectively at the Division One level. And I think when he establishes that inner third, it, it allows him to use that outer third to, to his uh, to his benefit. But you're going to see today if he's got that inner third managed, he's going to have a, a, a pretty good. Uh, command of, of, the, of the Navy hitters. As Blue bounces out there to second base, so two quick outs here for King in the bottom half of the first inning. We're up the DH, Stephen Bourne, all league DH. That's from the left side of the plate. Pitch down low and the count's 1-0 to him. Bourne, Patriot League first team as the designated hitter. Season which he batted 316, home run, 34 runs batted in in the regular season. And quickly, it's two balls and no strikes. Just a sophomore, another one of the young bats in the Navy lineup, a team that's going to lose Curry and Trent and Deneen after this season. They'll look to lean on Bourne maybe a little bit more next season. Yeah, I don't think a lot of the coaches in the league are, are feeling sorry for Coach Costi. He's got some, some young players <laughs> coming up, and Stephen Bourne and some of these younger guys who will fill in real nicely. He'll miss those guys, but th this youngster right here is going to be a fabulous player over the next two years for Navy. Pitch. Called a strike, just caught the outside corner there, and it's three balls in one strike. It's a little bit more of a missed picking up. We're expecting on and off rain throughout the afternoon. They have scheduled just one game for today. So he fouls that one off, and it goes full three and two. So originally, we're going to try to play a doubleheader today, but they decided they're going to just try to get the one game in today, and then they'll look to play at least one tomorrow, and maybe two if necessary. Payoff pitch is lined out towards center field. Coming on the center fielder, he makes the catch, and the side is retired. So King matches the 1-2-3 first inning of Luke Gillingham here in the bottom half of the first. No runs, hits, errors. Nobody left on base. We'll head to the second. Scoreless between Holy Cross and Navy. Go to the top half of the second inning. Luke Gillingham back out for his second inning of work. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Sean Leary back with you. This will be the cleanup batter leading off here for Holy Cross and a Slight delay as the home plate umpire is going to look over towards that Holy Cross dugout. Gregory Walls behind home plate calling the balls and strikes as, as Bill Schlick, left fielder, will lead things off. And the first pitch to him is a called strike. If you want a scatter report on how to get this guy out, Ben, I don't have one. <laughs> this this uh, young man really had a terrific regular season and postseason versus us. And... Uh, Looks as though Lucas has been exclusively staying away to start this game and, and, and jumped ahead 0-2 again on, on the outer third of the plate. 
That pitch bounced foul. And it remains 0-2 that season. He batted 318, as you mentioned. Great season for him. Three home runs, 24 runs batted in. Second team all Patriot League. He's a junior. That pitch way up high with the fastball. It's one and two. Tough lineup here for Holy Cross. It's a very different lineup than Navy's, where Navy will string together the hits. They have the highest batting average in the league. So he hits that one off the end of the bat right to short. Blue has it. A little low on the throw to first. Nicely picked out there by Sale. And there's one away. Maybe that wet ball playing with the throw there of Travis Blue didn't look like he got out of his hand very cleanly there. Well, Travis got a little flat-footed on the, on the catch and throw there, and a lot of times when you haven't had a lot of reps out there over the course of the weekend, that first ball was really pivotal. You want to get that out, and boy, Sale made a terrific pick. That was an in-between hop, and uh, I guarantee you Blue will, will be uh, a little more relaxed on the next one. So here's Travis Cloney. Cloney bats from the left side of the plate. One of the few freshmen getting some time for Holy Cross. At a 215 his freshman year, three home runs, 14 runs batted in. Lefty lefty matchup is Gillingham's pitch. A little check swing roller right to first. Sale has that one. He'll step on the bag, and Gillingham has retired the first five batters here of the ball game into the senior Gillingham, two-time Patriot League pitcher of the year. He had that rocky outing. This past week, three and a third innings of seven run ball. That was a career high seven runs that he allowed. And then you look back to last year against Lafayette, tough outing there. So really here in the Patriot League Championship Series, trying to have his first good playoff outing. Well, I'll tell you what's impressive. You, you take a look at his demeanor and his poise, and you wouldn't know he struggled last week. He went out there today, and he's, he's established his pitches. And I don't think they could have scripted any better for him to get out there and, and, and be pounding the zone. And honestly, I don't even think he's got the command that, that, that he may have as he moves on in this game because he's been able to move it out. But when he starts moving that ball back in, it's going to add another element to his game. So John Hassel bats with the bases clear and two outs, nine home runs on the season for Hassel. That pitch bounces up there. It's two balls and one strike. That's, I'm sorry, that's the element Holy Cross brings. They, they have that power. You know, they, they can, they're can they in scoring position right now at home plate a lot of times with their hitters. And uh, Hassel had, had nine home runs, and, and I think all nine guys in their lineup had multi-home runs, uh, you know, one, one through nine in the, in the uh, in a lineup. That's tough, that's tough to have an easy inning as a pitcher. Gillingham behind three and one, misses up high with that one. So that'll be the first base runner of the ball game on against Gillingham. Really a guy who does not walk very many batters. 19 walks and 78 in the third innings. But maybe the command not quite there for him. And with the stuff not as good, maybe afraid to come after the hitters a little bit more as he would as well. I think you nibble a little bit when you're not sure about the stuff being as sharp. But again, 19 walks in a season, you know, there's some games where coaches have seen almost that in one ball game. Uh, and so <laughs> you're really impressed with how he commands that zone. That one softly tapped to short. Blue will step on the bag himself and no harm done from the walk as Russo grounds out and the inning comes to an end. No, hit, no runs here in the second inning for Holy Cross. No hits and one runner left on base. One and a half innings in the books here in Annapolis and we're scoreless between Holy Cross and Navy. Go to the bottom half of the second inning, scoreless between Navy and Holy Cross. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Sean Leary back with you. Sean Trent will lead things off. He takes a first pitch strike from Brendan King here. Be in the bottom half of the second inning. It's King, easy one, two, three, first inning. Now facing a guy in Sean Trent who had a pretty good weekend last week for Navy. It counts one and one to him. Nine hits last week for Sean Trent, a guy who was the Patriot League player of the year in 2015 and Amazing to call it a down year for him as he swings through that one. Down year for him when he hit 300 with three home runs and 43 runs batted in. Now, I think it was just a matter of time, so he broke out. And unfortunately for Bucknell, uh, they happened to be the opponent that weekend, but not a surprise. He, he had a tremendous junior year and has the skills to do what he did last weekend. Chases that one down in the dirt, so he strikes out. First strikeout of the ball game for either side. And the starters have looked pretty sharp, so the weather not affecting King and Gillingham here as both of them were expected to pitch yesterday. Never ended up even warming up yesterday with the rain all day, and now this one didn't know throughout the morning if we were going to be able to get it in. This is the first pitch here fouled off by Deneen, and it's 0-1, but clearly two experienced pitchers and guys that have not let these conditions affect them. Well, King was impressive there. He got the get-me-over curveball over. 
uh, to, to, to get 0-1 and then put the put-away breaking ball to get Trent to swing. And that's when a guy's got uh, a real good feel for the baseball when he's able to put it where he wants to. And, and pitchers who have command don't throw just pitches for strikes. They also throw them for, for balls. And he, he really did a nice job of setting up Trent. Pitch here is taken for a strike by Deneen. Deneen breakout season his senior year at 321 for the mids. First team all Patriot League outfielder. He really tore it up in league play, batting up over 400 in Patriot League games. That pitch rolled to second. O'Neill has it. Easy toss to first. And King, like Gillingham, tires the first five batters of the ball game, and that'll bring Leland Sale to the plate. We're going to make our dinner plans at 315, it looks like, <laughs> at this point. It's fun to watch kids executing at this level. That's why they're the top two of the top arms in the league, if not the top two, and I'm not surprised to see what we're seeing over these first two innings. So here's Leland Sale, guy who had a big week last week. It was really Sale and Trent last week that carried that Navy offense. Sale, 6 for 12 last week against Bucknell. Two home runs, six runs batted in. King jumps ahead of him 0-1. Deals the pitch, and it's grounded right through the hole on the left side for a base hit. So that'll be the first hit of the ball game for either team. Sale with a single, and he's a two-out base runner for Adrian Chinnery. And a little bit of what we were talking about before with Navy, a lot of singles, not a ton of extra base hits for this team. They really have to string it together, score runs. And on the other side for Holy Cross, they're a team that, as you said, they're in scoring position when they're up at the plate. A couple of guys with nine home runs on the year. So very different offenses. Absolutely. And if you're Coach Desenzo right there, you're happy with what happened there. King forced the action, got a, got a single. It's probably going to take another single or two to score a run. And so he wants him to be efficient, attack the zone, and I kind of think that was a win-win. Pitcher throwing strikes and, and giving up a single, and now you know, we'll see him buckle down with a man, man on base. But uh, I just think he's, he started off exactly like he would have scripted it, where he's pounded the zone with multiple pitches. Here's the 0-1 pitch up and in, and it's 1-1. One one. Adrian Chinnery, second straight year for him, a league catcher. 319 batting average in the regular season. Two home runs, 18 runs batted in. Struggled a little bit, though, over the last couple of weeks. He went one for 11 last week against Bucknell. The pitch misses down the way. It's two and one. That one was a pretty big one. Two run single that put him ahead in game two. So a big hit there for Chinnery, but a guy who was really tearing it up in league play at one point and finished the season kind of cold. I think the advantage you have with Chinnery behind the plate is he's going to bring one one portion of his game every weekend. He, he, he completely controls the game behind the dish with his pitchers from the running game. And, boy, he's had a lot of clutch hits over his time as well. And so wouldn't surprise me this weekend if, if we see a little bit of that again. We saw it last year in the championship series. And he said last week a big two-run two single in the, in the Bucknell series. So two balls and two strikes the count here to Chinnery. So not much of a threat to run over there at first base. Saw King toss over there once. Now the 2-2 pitch is lined foul again. Hope you didn't park over there, Sean. I did not. <laughs> Scoreless game here in the bottom half of the second inning. Got the two aces on each team on the mound. Holy Cross throwing Brendan King. He's trying to match the two scoreless innings of Luke Gillingham. Two of the best in the league over the last couple of years in King and Gillingham. That pitch. Just a little high, maybe. I, I would think it's a little high. I think, I think that was one where, you know, he's, I think the umpire's uh, pointing inside a little bit. But that was that's a pitch I think King executed as he had hoped. And uh, maybe Chinnery got a little bit of a break on that one. Holy Cross dugout. You could hear them wanted the call. Sale will be off on the pitch as he's running. 3-2 pitch. High bouncer towards the middle of the infield. Second baseman O'Neill has it, and he'll get it over to first in time to get Chinnery for the final out here in the second inning. So two scoreless innings in the books here between Navy and Holy Cross. We'll head to the third. No score between Navy and Holy Cross. Head to the third. Scoreless here between Holy Cross and Navy. Max Bishop Stadium. Site of the Patriot League Championship Series the last two years. Ben Gordon Goldstein alongside me, Sean Leary, the man who coached the team that won here last year. 
for the Lehigh Mountain Hawks as the first pitch here of the third inning rolled right to short. Blue has it a little wide on the throw to first, but another nice play there by Sale to hold the bag, and they get Wojtek for the first out here in the third inning. Pretty good plays there by Sale over at first base early on in this one. That's the job of the first baseman. It's, it's difficult to throw the ball, especially a wet ball today, and so his job is to make sure anything that's catchable, he goes ahead and makes a play because that's what Gillingham wants. He wants to command the outer third, force some 5-3s, some 6-3s, and so far he's getting exactly what he wants. So Bobby and Dahlia, the nine-hole batter, center fielder for Holy Cross, guy who hit 296, five home runs, 23 runs batted in. It's quickly one and one to him. Pretty nice out of the number nine hole to have a guy who hit five home runs on the season for your squad. I saw a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> he had a terrific season in particular uh, against our squad. He played outstanding. He's had a terrific senior year, but I, but I can speak firsthand. He's another one. I'm not sure how to, how to get him out, so I can't <laughs> give you a scouting report on this guy either. Two balls and one strike as that pitch grounded towards the middle of the infield on the backhand. The freshman Wilcox has it. He throws wide to first, though. And it's not in time, and Indalia will reach. They'll call it an infield single. And that's the first hit of the ball game against Luke Gillingham. A little bit of a tough play there for Wilcox, having to range up the middle on the back end. And off balance throw to first, and Leland Sale getting some work in over there at first as well early on in this one. I think if Wilcox could play that one again, he'd try to plant and sort of rock and fire on that. Once he started fading towards the outfield, that, that gives a chance, uh, the ball a chance to sort of fade to the arm side. But not an easy play by any means with a quick runner, but... Uh, I think he's a player who, who believes he could make that play. So Gillingham will have to work out of the stretch for just the second time in this game. His first pitch here to Lovello is taken for a strike, and it's 0-1. For Gillingham, though, you look at the last couple of innings, one, two, three inning in the first three fly balls, but a lot of ground ball outs now, so starting to get the ball down in the zone a little bit more, which would be a good sign there for him. So that pitch grounded to the left side, but that'll find the hole for a base hit. So back-to-back, one-out singles here for Holy Cross. They have the first runner of the game into scoring position, and Daly at second, Lavello to first, and Cam O'Neill, their hottest hitter, coming to the plate. Both of those balls are, are base hits, but I, but I would, if I'm the pitching coach for Navy and Coach Costi, I'd feel pretty good because they weren't barreled. They were hit hard, but they, they were on the ground, and if they're three or four feet to the right or left, you got yourself a couple more ground ball outs. So I think Gillingham's uh, finding that groove where he, wants, where he wants to spot the ball and keep the ball on the ground. So, again, baseball isn't about luck, but sometimes balls will find holes and give the hitters credit. But I think the pitcher uh, is also executing what he's trying to do. So Adrian Chinnery, word on the mound there with Gillingham for O'Neill will come to the plate. First pitch to him is down low, and it's 1-0. and So first opportunity here for Holy Cross of the ball game. Back-to-back -back singles. It was the third inning last week for Gillingham that Bucknell really started to hit him, and then he only lasted into the into the fourth, one out. He lasted three and a third innings total, and he misses with a couple in a row here to Cam O'Neill. Opportunity for that Holy Cross crowd to get into it a little bit, the dugout as well. And this is certainly the guy who's had an outstanding season, but Gillingham definitely wants to make sure Cam is someone who puts ball in play with, with Telly coming up on deck. As he lifts that one to left field over into the corner, it's Trent who will make the catch. Going halfway there is Indalia, so he'll retreat back to second bases. Ball really carrying pretty well here. You wouldn't think so in these conditions, but I guess a slight breeze out. You can see the flag in center field with the breeze out, and that one really carried almost towards the wall there in the corner in left field. Yeah, that was p pitch was up in the zone a little bit, and Cam got a pretty good piece of that, but once it got up above, there's, it seems like it the higher the ball is, the more it was carrying uh, on both of those fly balls. That, that actually got to the corner, right to the, right to the wall, right to the uh, padding there in left, in left field. And not easy out there once you get out to the warning track in the outfield because it's wet. You can see puddles that have formed out there because of the rain over the last couple of days as Critelli will step to the plate. Count one and one to him. Another one of these dangerous hitters in Critelli. The plate tied for the league lead in home runs. Nine home runs, 40 runs batted in. An opportunity to try to get Holy Cross out in front here in the top of the third. The 1-1 one, one pitch to him, swing and a miss, and the bat goes flying into the dugout of Navy. Look out over there, and a little out in front of that one. I would say he was slightly fooled by that changeup right there. That was, <laughs> uh, you might see that once or twice a season. And this young man is, is one of those... Uh, one of those players that every coach has to scout, has, has to plan a scouting report around. He has the ability, you know, last year in our semifinal, he had a walk-off three-run home run, and, and I think he's had three or four home runs off of us the last couple of years, and you just can't make a mistake to him. He's got that, that power and, and 
really has just been a clutch player for them the last few years. Three for 14 last week against your squad, but big hit, six runs batted in in the series. And he's got an opportunity here, but behind in the count, one and two. As Gillingham deals home and bounces that one. Chinnery, a little trouble finding it in the dirt as it goes to two balls and two strikes. He's the type of hitter you seem to remember his hits. He, he, I, I, I would have guessed he had eight hits last weekend <laughs> after, after knowing all the RBIs he had. He just, when the, when the uh, chips are down and they need a big hit, he, he seems to come through more often than not. Gillingham 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss. He struck him out. First strike out of the ball game for Gillingham, and he gets out of his first jam of the game with it. No runs here in the third inning for Holy Cross. Two hits, and they leave two runners on base. Two and a half innings complete, still scoreless between Navy and Holy Cross. Go to the bottom half of the third inning, scoreless between Holy Cross and Navy. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Sean Leary back with you. Brendan Kings retired six of the first seven that he's faced in this one. As Matthew Wilcox will lead things off here for Navy. It'll be 8 9 1 do up for the mids. Wilcox, Knowles, and Curry here in the third inning against King, who's been sharp here over the first couple of innings. That one is line foul, and quickly he's got Wilcox in the hole. 0 2. Three ground ball outs, a strikeout for King, and the one single, just kind of a CNI single through the left side. So. And then building on that performance from last week when he threw the eight innings and picked up the win. The 0-2 pitch popped up foul and remains no balls and two strikes. You'll see Navy down the bottom of their lineup on base percentage is up over 400. These guys will work counts. They'll find their way on. They'll scrap. And that's really been a, a big part of their success this year. They've been able to turn that lineup over to their key guys with a lot of guys on base. And I think uh, Wilcox and Knowles are, have been uh, critical for them in that regard. Wilcox is a freshman playing in every game this season for Navy. Started all but one of them. They'll peel to first. Didn't go on that one. They count two balls and two strikes. Wilcox, you mentioned that the on-base percentage for him as a freshman pretty good as he drew a team-high 33 walks in the regular season. The 2-2 two -two inside and drawing a deep count here against King, it's three balls and two strikes. And so the very bottom of the lineup has said these guys will really make pitchers work. Payoff pitch, that's a called third strike. Nice pitch there by King, his second strikeout. And Wilcox is down to start things off here in the third inning. Ben, I think that strikeout was set up by the previous pitch. You know, we talked about King willing to work inside and that, that pitch missed, but it was a setup pitch. Either he gets that strike three there or he has the outer third again. And boy, he spotted that one up after the 2-2 after the two -two miss. Logan Knowles steps to the plate. First pitch strike to him and it's 0-1. The other thing for King, when you look at this game, earlier in the season, King was able to get the win against Navy in game one. So he's one of the few guys in the league that's beaten Luke Gillingham this season. So that's got to be a little bit of extra confidence for him. His opening weekend of Patriot League play, he was able to get the better of Luke Gillingham and Navy. Well, you know that's something they talked about as they were preparing this week, that as terrific as Gillingham was, they, they, they've been able to beat him. And I, I'm not sure in, in Luke's uh, past three seasons how, how many games he's dropped in Patriot League. I, I think it may be two total in that entire time. So um, there aren't many folks who can, who can use, uh, so that, use one, that line as a team. That one lined down the left field line, a base hit, as Knowles will turn around first. He'll stop there, though. It's just the second hit of the ball game for Navy, a one-out single as Knowles able to slice that one down the left field line. So runner aboard and turn it back over the top of the lineup and Robert Curry will bat. That was a terrific piece of hit and Logan just got his hands inside the ball, didn't try to do too much. And like we said before, he now he's turning that lineup over for, for, for Curry and the rest of the guys that, that have uh, produced all the, all the runs for Navy this season. So toss the first and Knowles will dive back in there safely. So we saw Gillingham in the top half of this inning. He was able to work out of his first jam of the ball game. Holy Cross had first and second one out. We're not able to score. And now Navy gets a base runner aboard here with one out in the bottom half of the third inning. They have the top of the lineup with opportunities. Robert Curry takes a strike and it's 0-1. So we'll see if Navy got any momentum there from that top half of the third inning. King's pitch, a little bit high, and it's one and one. It's interesting to see King as we go through the lineup the second time. He's changed the pattern a little bit here with Curry, and Curry is, he might be the toughest out in that lineup. He, there's just not a whole lot of holes in his swing, and so you see King try to work some breaking balls this time around. 
One one pitch is swung on and hit in the air out towards left field. Good contact, but right at Slick, who makes the catch. And Curry retired, so two away. Runner remains at first base, and Travis Blue come to the plate. And King has had a ton of success in his career against this Navy team. Six innings, one run ball earlier this year against Navy, and then last year pitched a nine-inning complete game against them, getting the win, allowing just one run. They need 96 pitches in that game, so he's been efficient against this Navy team. Trying to get through three scoreless. His pitch counts are manageable because he's around the zone, and he's going to get early swings. And gets one there, grounded right to third. Russo has it. The throw is offline, but Cretelli will be able to step on the bag there at first base. So the one-out single, no damage done there against King. No runs here in the third for Navy on one hit and one runner left on base. So head to the fourth, still scoreless here between Navy and Holy Cross. Gillingham ready to go to work here in the fourth, and the first pitch of the innings hit right in the air out towards Curry. So one pitch, one out here in the fourth inning as we welcome you back out to Max Bishop Stadium. A scoreless game here between Navy and Holy Cross. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Lehigh head coach Sean Leary with me, and both starting pitchers, coach, have been pretty good over the first three innings. Not a whole lot for either side offensively. And we mentioned last inning how King is around the zone. Gillingham, the same thing. The second time through, You'll see guys swing a little bit early. They won't want to fall behind in the count. We've seen a couple one-pitch outs, and quite honestly, the coaches, they shake their head a little bit because they want to see these guys out of the ball game, and they're being pretty efficient. And it uh, be interesting to see how, how, again, we talked about King getting through the second time through, how, how Luke works the second time through the lineup here. Cloney, first two pitches to him balls. So he's ahead in the count, 2-0, and oh, and misses with that one, and it's three balls and no strikes. Gillingham does have a walk in this game. A little bit of a rain beginning to pick up here as well. We've had rain for basically the last two days. Gets the call there, and it's three and one. Tough conditions to try to play through for these teams. Not knowing yesterday and again today, not really knowing what the situation was going to be with the game. I've been very impressed with the, how clean the play has been the first three-plus innings here because these guys are out here trying to stay loose, trying to stay warm, and now they're out here with, a, with wet conditions. The ball tends to get a little slick, and boy, both teams have been pretty good. Payoff pitch is a cold third strike looking. Got that one at the knees. Cloney started to walk towards first base, thought it might have been the second walk of the game for Gillingham. Instead, it's the second strikeout, and he's retired the first two batters of the fourth, and that'll bring Josh Hassel to the plate. That was certainly located in a, in a place where I'm not sure he could have done a whole lot with it anyway, and it's tough tough when you got a guy like Gillingham spotted up like that. First pitch to Hassel in there for a strike, and it's 0-1. So saw that earlier in the game from King. Fell behind a batter 3-0, was able to come back and get him, and now you see the senior Gillingham able to do the same thing. And two quick strikes here to Hassel as well. And looking for another 1-2-3 inning. Had one in the first. Had a couple of base runners on against him in the third. Now here's his 0-2 pitch. Very close, misses outside. It's one and two. A few umpires trying to help out the home plate umpire there. <laughs> they had a few thoughts on that. Gillingham's pitch, that's a called third strike looking. Pretty good pitch there from Gillingham. Another tough one at the knees. And back-to-back -back strikeouts here to finish things off here in the fourth inning. No runs, hits, errors. Nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Scoreless here between Navy and Holy Cross. And, don't, and make sure for the latest news and stories on the Patriot League, follow the Patriot League on Twitter at Patriot League. Again, that's at Patriot League on Twitter. We'll head to the bottom half of the fourth inning. No score here between Navy and Holy Cross. For Navy here in the bottom half of the fourth inning, a scoreless game. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Sean Leary back with you. Brendan King back out for his fourth inning of work. He's faced just one over the minimum through the first three innings of this ball game. It'll be a 3-4-5 do up for Navy here in the inning against him. Stephen Bourne, left-handed bat, standing in to lead things off. The 1-0 pitch to him is lined out towards right field. That'll be in there for a base hit. Just the second hit of the game for Navy. They have the leadoff batter aboard, and Sean Trent to the plate. Nice swing there by Bourne. But again, King doesn't give you a whole lot of uh, ability to drive the pitches. He hits his location. It takes a very good swing like that from Bourne, even just to line one in the right for a single. So Sean Trent 
Come to the plate. 0 for 1 in this one. He struck out. His first time up is a toss to first, and Bourne will dive back in there safely. Bourne, a guy with a little bit of sneaky speed. You wouldn't really think of him as a base stealer, but 7 for 8 in stolen base attempts this season. It's a weapon Navy can use for sure. I think one of the reasons they've run a little less is they've just been so efficient offensively. A lot of guys swinging the bat so well that they haven't quite run as much as they have the last few years. Is that pitch in there for a strike to Trent? What's the scouting report on Wojtek behind the plate? Both of these catchers are difficult to run on. They, they just do an outstanding job. And, and probably more importantly, the pitchers do a nice job of keeping their times down. Is that pitch lifted in the air out towards center field? And Dahlia going back, got turned around going after, and it's going to be over his head and off the wall. Bourne heading for third. They'll throw up the stop sign there. It's a double there for Trent and Navy with the best scoring opportunity of the ball game now. They've got second and third. Nobody out here to begin the fourth inning. Off the bat, it looked like Indalia had a good shot at that one, and then it just kept carrying. I, I don't think he got the best route on it, but I'm not sure if he even had a direct route if he gets that. That, that carried all the way to the fence. And again, that ball just really carrying well. It, as you said, off the bat, didn't seem like it was going to go that far, and that might have thrown Indalia off a little bit. Looked like he got kind of turned around on it as well, going out on it. And so now Navy has a chance to strike first here in game one. As Connor Deneen will come to the plate. First pitch swinging, and he swings through it. Counts 0-1. Holy Cross going to play the infield back here all the way around. Looks like the third baseman, Russo, will stick close to the bag there, but still back a couple of steps behind it. So they'll concede the run to try to get the first out of the inning, and that one rolled right to second. Be a productive out there for Deneen as O'Neill to first gets bored in. It also moves Trent over to third, and Navy has the first run of the game. It's one to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, that's an outstanding out right there. He advances two runners, puts his team on the board, gets an RBI. That's that's just good situational hitting right there. And as you said, not only does he get the run in, but he also moves another one to third here with less than two outs. It'll force the Holy Cross infield now to come in all the way around. Sales swinging away first pitch, grounds it to third, bobbled there by Russo, picks it up, won't have a play anywhere. It does hold Trent over at third base as he was able to knock that one down. E5 there on the play. And now runners at the corners here with one out. Adrian Chinnery to the plate and would imagine that at least the middle of the infield here for Holy Cross is going to back up play for two. Absolutely. I'll just make a quick comment on, on one of the difficulties with this weather. I, the outfielders didn't have pregame. They didn't get to see the ball off the mm -hmm. bat and batting practice to see how it's going to carry. And, and there you don't get as many live ground balls. And that, that, that ball was probably a play that Russo's made you know 95% of the time. But they got a couple fungos and they jumped out there. And now you're seeing some game action and, and – uh, it's a, it's a little tougher for the guys to go out there and just go and play a game without having that practice. Situation runner at third as well, maybe pop the head up a little bit Absolutely thinking did. about him. Absolutely did. He, he glanced to his left. First pitch to Chinnery popped up foul out of play. That'll go just over our heads into the parking lot. And it counts 0-1. Oh You'd give King, King credit there. There's a man on third, and he did his job. And so I know his team right here is looking to pick him up and maybe turn a double play and, and, and sort of uh, turn the tide a little bit. But getting that man in from third in that situation is usually the the uh, difference maker in these close games. Pitch there to Chinnery. He's lifted in the air down the right field line over towards the corner. It'll be foul, though. And they count 0-2. And, and Chinnery, guy who already grounded out once in this game, is a prime double play candidate if he hits the ball on the ground. Doesn't run all that well. She got Sale over at first. Trent at third. Navy already a run in here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Trying to get to King. Off the bat, I thought that one was going to stay fair. It's just hooked a little bit towards the end. 0-2 is high. And it's it the is. The part about being a hitter, that ball's foul, and now you got to start all over again. Right. <laughs> got to it it play again. It's, it's muddy down there in the corner and on the warning tracks. Tough conditions for the outfielders, and a little bit of a miss picking up as well. 1-2 is in the dirt. And now it's two balls and two strikes here to Chinnery. Also have two catchers today who block outstanding. That, that ball was a difficult block, and, and Voidick made it look like it was just a, a simple play. King had five wild pitches on the season. So look to third, look over to first. No one biting on that move. A 
of the set, 2-2 two -two pitch, and he hit him. Hit him with a pitch. That is something King has had issues with this season. A guy who didn't walk very many on the season, but he hit 10 batters on the year, so maybe he likes to pitch inside, and now the base is loaded. That's the one item you're going to come up against when you pitch inside. I think, I think it's pivotal to his success to establish that inner third, but you will see him kind of hit some guys just because he's when he's going in there, if he misses, there's no margin for error on, on that inner third right there. And uh, that's not a situation he was um, looking to push Adrian off the plate or, or to hit him. I think he was just trying to put him away with, it, with an inside fastball. And you see it there on the replay, just kind of got away from him inside and hit him square on the back. And so now the base is loaded, an early mound visit here. After three pretty sharp innings for King, he faced just one over the minimum. Navy's three, four batters able to get to him a little bit here in the fourth. Good clean contact from Bourne and Trent to start the inning, and then some good hitting by Deneen as well to get that first run of the game in. And I'm sure Coach Asenzo is saying right now, hey, they've got one. You want to minimize this inning. We want to try to keep this to one, and sometimes even as a coach, you're saying even if we get out of here with a 2 nothing score, we're feeling pretty good because things haven't been going their way this inning. And so if King keeps it to a one nothing or 2 nothing game, he knows his offense, Co Coach Desenzo's offense, has enough firepower to come back. And again, we talked about with one swing of the bat, sometimes they're back in the ball game. So these next batter, this next, next batter or two is going to be pivotal for, for Holy Cross as they, as they try to turn the momentum. So here's Wilcox, who struck out his first time up. Bats with the bases loaded and one out here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. The first pitch to him goes with the breaking ball and gets it over for a strike. Big first pitch there with the bases loaded. Hitter sitting fastball there with the bases loaded after a hit by pitch, and that, that's a terrific execution of that, of that breaking ball. Corner infielders are in, middle infield back here with one out and the bases loaded. And the pitch lays off that one, and it's one and one. Freshman Wilcox was 0 for 13 last week. So you're saying he's due. <laughs> Hit 277 in the regular season. Now the 1-1 one, one is a grounder right to short. Could be two. They'll go over to second for one. The relay to first is in time. And they turn the 6-4-3 double play. Huge play there for Holy Cross. King's able to get out of the jam and holds Navy to just one run here in the fourth inning. As Navy does strike first, they get the one run on the inning on two hits. There was one error, and after the double play, two men left on base. Head to the fifth. It's one to nothing. Navy leads Holy Cross. Hey, fans, make sure to follow the Patriot League and its member schools as they celebrate the league's 25th anniversary throughout the 2015-16 academic year. For more details, visit the Patriot League website or your favorite Patriot League school's website. So we go to the top half of the fifth inning. Navy has the first run of this game. It's one to nothing. Gillingham quickly jumping out in front, the leadoff batter here of the fifth, 0-2, as it'll be 7-8-9 to up for Holy Cross. Thomas Russo leading things off. Gillingham works extremely quickly, and it's one and two. Holy Cross will look to build off that momentum. They, they really they really stopped the beginning, and now Gillingham's job is to, to get the next run for Navy. I'll say that a lot to our team. You want to get the next run in a one nothing game, and be interesting to see who puts the next run on the board. Softly hit to second. Wilcox has it over to first, and he retires the leadoff batter here in the fifth inning. That's six in a row that Gillingham set down since those back-to-back -back singles in the third. And Alex Wojtek will come to the plate. Consistently getting weak contact on those ground balls, though, and I think that's what his, his objective is. And the way we've seen the ball carry to the outfield, important to try to keep the ball on the ground in this game as well. It's that pitch outside, and it's 1-0 here to Wojtek, the catcher. 0-for-1, grounded out to short his first time up. The pitch there is hitting the air out towards right center field. Starting in was Curry. It's going to be over his head and all the way to the wall. Wojtek will stop it second with a double and another ball out there. We saw in Daly in the last half inning, kind of misread one in center. And now Curry, he started in, had to retreat back, and it gets over his head, and it's a double there for the catcher. Again, I'm not making excuses for the players by any means, but those are two pretty talented center fielders, and it almost looks as though they're being fooled a little bit by how much the ball is carrying out there. And Again, ball up just a little bit in the zone, and, and a hitter puts a, uh, the barrel on it, and those balls are getting to the fence pretty quickly. 
So here's Indalia, first pitch swinging and fouls it back, and the count's 0-1. So big inning here for Holy Cross. Gave up the one run in the bottom half of the fourth inning, but got out of that bases loaded jam. And now trying to answer right back and kind of turn the momentum in their direction. A one pitch bounces up there. Chinnery, clean pick there. Nice play. And it's yeah, one and one. momentum, but now the opportunity is to take it in their direction. And I think the first thing they did was enormous. But as I mentioned, I think this next run here, whether it be for Holy Cross or Navy, will be, be a big, big part of this game. Pitch is low, and it's two balls and one strike. And Chinnery's going to go out to the mound and have a word here with Gillingham quickly. Be looking for the catcher to say they're just kind of calming him down after a couple of balls in a row. I think Chinnery does an outstanding job of handling his staff. I, I do do make a joke a little bit. He, he probably visits the mound as m much as any catcher I've <laughs> ever seen, though. Sometimes uh, I think he runs out there and just uh, you know, shares a little bit of wisdom, or, or mainly, in my, in my opinion, he's just trying to calm him down and, and maybe even tell him what the next pitch should be. Here's the 2-1 delivery now. Gets it over for a strike, and it's two balls and two strikes. Daly a one-for-one one infield single his first time up in the third. What you can see is complete trust between pitcher and catcher here. I don't see many shakeoffs. Pitch is bounced over to short. Blue has it. Runner's going to advance over to third as he throws to first to get in Dahlia. We tick running there on a ball to the left side of the infield, able to get into third base, but now two outs in the inning. Nick Lovello will come to the plate. That was a little tougher play than it looked. That was full, full run, full sprint in. Boyd made a great read there, slow roller. He should be on third, and that added a little bit of uh, element of, or uh, a little bit of uh, difficulty there for the shortstop. I thought he did a nice job making that play. So top of the line up here. Here's Lavello. First pitch is up high, and it's one and zero. We've seen Blue a couple of times. That one was a clean throw, but his first two plays of the game also pulling the first baseman a little bit. It's Gillingham misses with two in a row here to Lavello. Now Lavello. He, he does not swing at a pitch unless it's his or, or when he's on, and he certainly works some counts and gets the hitter's counts. That one's over for a strike, and it's 2-1. and one. And even though the average only at 224 this year, still a pretty good on base percentage, 365, hit 39 walks, which was first in the league. You look at the body, his work, he's, he's one of the best players in this league. When we faced him the last four years, he's another guy you circle and try to game plan around because – uh, you know, in the semifinals last year, two home runs. This this year in the semifinals, three-run home run versus us. Just clutch hitter. Fouls that one off. It remains two and two. And obviously the high baseball IQ form comes from a baseball family, the son of Red Sox bench coach Tori Lovello. Two-way player. Outstanding on defense and, and a weapon on offense for sure. 2-2 two -two pitch, a grounder left side. It'll get through the hole for a base hit. So a big two-out hit there for the senior Lavello. It knocks in Boytick from third, and it's all tied up. A run apiece here in the fifth. It's difficult to say. I, I wouldn't want Cotelli up in that situation, but but I, just from a, an opposing coach's view, I, I probably – that, that leadoff hitter right there is a, is a young mm -hmm. man who seems to come, <laughs> come through with that hit an awful lot. And uh, I would say he's, he's, he might be the guy that Holy Cross wants up there in those two-out situations as much as anybody. Here's the first pitch to O'Neill. It's lifting the air out towards pretty deep center. This time, though, Curry will get there. He'll make the catch for the final out here in the fifth inning. But Holy Cross gets that run right back here in the top half of the fifth inning. They get a run on two hits, and they strand one runner on base. Middle of the fifth inning, one to one, Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Sean Leary back with you. Brendan King back out for his fifth inning of work. Logan Knowles will lead things off and a check swing roller behind the plate. It's quickly 0 and 1. So 9 1 2 do up here for Navy as each team striking for a run in their last at bat. Navy getting a run in the bottom of the fourth inning. Holy Cross answers right back in the top of the fifth. The pitch a called strike, and it's 0-2. So all square here, and those starters, even though they've given up the run, have been pretty good in this one. A great job by King last half inning to work out of that bases loaded jam, deuce the double play ball. Coaches had their pregame meeting today, and they said it'd be 1-1 after five or 1-1 going to the fifth. They'd be pretty excited because there's a lot of uh, adrenaline running through these pitchers' uh, bodies, and they've they got to control that emotion and they both come out and give their, their teams a chance to compete early. And now it's going to come down to execution in the last four innings. 
So two balls and two strikes here to Knowles. He is one of the four hits so far in this game for Navy. Pitch there's a called third strike. Got him looking. Third strike out of the ball game for King. He retires the leadoff hitter here in the fifth, and now they'll turn it back to the top of the lineup, and Robert Curry will come to the plate. You look at the momentum Holy Cross uh, took away from Navy in the in the fourth inning, and then that big two-out hit. You know, you'll you'll circle those plays as the, as the, as the game goes on, the weekend goes on. How many times you come up with a big two-out hit, or how many times you minimize the beginning? And right now, Holy Cross is up two nothing in that regard. I mean, they they minimized the inning and then came up with a two out two out base hit. Here's Curry slaps that one foul. It's one and one to him. He's 0 for two so far in the game. Couple of flyouts, one to right, one to left. It's the third trip through the lineup now for Navy against King. Is it 65 pitches right now in this game? Both pitchers pretty comfortable with their numbers. Is that one right to short? Gobbled up by Lavello. A little wide on the throw to first, but Gratelli able to hold the bag as he dives down to snag that one. And we've seen a pretty good first base play by now. Gratelli and on the other side, Sale so far in this game. Yeah, that one looked like Gratelli just got his feet crossed up a little bit. That throw was pretty accurate. I think he got to the base a little later, maybe didn't pick up the throw because I think he's sort of smiling with home or <laughs> first base umpire a little bit, saying that, that that's one that he probably didn't have to go to a D to catch. It's Travis Blue will come to the plate. Two outs, nobody on base. So King looking for that shutdown inning after his team was able to score the run. Gillingham was not able to get it. Now King has two outs and nobody on base. And Blue looks at a first pitch ball. Another key for Holy Cross has been keeping Curry off base. He, he's such a catalyst for that offense, and three times up and three times out, and I, I'm sure that just makes uh, the the the, uh, the work for King a little bit easier to have him off the base pass. Doesn't have to think as much with a guy like Curry. Absolutely. Potentially on the base pads. 2-0 pitch, swung and popped way up in the air on the infield. Shortstop Lavello behind the mound calling for it. He puts it away, and King has himself a very quick 1-2-3 fifth inning. No runs, hits, errors, nobody left on base. On to the sixth, 1-1, one one, Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. Hey, fans, five Patriot League institutions will stream their respective graduations on the Patriot League network. Lafayette did theirs yesterday on May 21st as the first pitch hit in the air out towards pretty deep right field. Deneen going back, and he's able to make the catch and then backpedal into the wall. And for the first out of the inning, another ball that carries pretty well, but Cretelli is retired there for the first out here on the top of the sixth inning, and there's one away. So make sure to watch those ceremonies, PatriotLeague.tv. The Patriot League, today's scholar athletes, tomorrow's leaders. As it's one to one here on the top half of the sixth inning, Gillingham gets the first pitch out. Phil Slick, cleanup batter, comes to the plate. He takes a first pitch ball. As Gillingham's been able to deal with the two through five hitters so far in the lineup, combined 0 for 10 now. It's the bottom of the lineup and then Lavello in the top of the lineup that's done a little bit of damage against him to get that run across. Cotelli did barrel that last one. That was probably the best one we've seen from that middle of the lineup. Uh, you see, see a running catch by Deneen up against the fence. Pr pretty terrific play because that ball carried again more than more than we thought off the bat and got all the way to the base of the fence. Ball and two strikes here to sli Slick and the pitch swing and a miss. He struck him out. Four strikeouts now for Gillingham and he's trying to bounce back after giving up his first run of the game in the fifth. Tires the first two of the inning here in the sixth, and Travis Cloney will come to the plate. Doesn't look like a whole lot of fun batting today. I think <laughs> these guys are spotting the ball up. Even King down 2-0 last inning, spotted up a ball and jammed a guy for a pop-up to end the inning. That one popped up, and we'll just get it a play onto the top of the Navy dugout there with Knowles and Chinnery converging over there. It's 0-1. If you look at Gillingham, five and two-thirds inning so far, 74 pitches. Guy who's very comfortable going up over 100. He goes deep into games. He threw more shutouts than anyone in the nation this season. Those seven inning shutouts. A pitch sliced foul again left side. And it's quickly no balls and two strikes. That's what he's been doing the last couple of years, going deep into ball games. I've seen a few of those shutouts. <laughs> 
0-2 pitch, grounder right side, Wilcox ranging over from the edge of the right field glass, throws wild the first. Sale kind of had to reach back to try to grab it, was not able to do so. And there's a two out base runner in Travis Coloney. We'll see if they call it a hit or an error and they will go hit there. Long way for Wilcox to go to get to that one. So an infield single there for Coloney and he's a two out base runner. Yeah, another very difficult play, but I think Wilcox got himself there. I'd like to see Sale maybe square up a little bit differently towards the outfield and, and, and stretch a little differently, but that was not an easy play. Um, but those are the kind of plays that when you make them, uh, it just makes it a little bit easier on your pitcher. Here's Hassel, first pitch ball. Looked like it could have been a 1-2-3 inning for Gillingham. Instead, he has to throw at least a couple more pitches also to try to get out of this inning. I read body language, and Wilcox, you know, when that play was over, you could see he, he expected to make that play. I love that mm -hmm. uh, to see that in an athlete where, was that a great play? That would have been a really, really nice play. But when he didn't execute it, you could see right now he's saying to himself, I, I can make that one, and I'm going I'm to make it next time. 1-0 pitch, runner going, pitch is taken down low. Great jump there off of first from Cloney, going on first move there of Gillingham, and really no shot for Chinnery to try to throw him out. Now a runner into scoring position with two outs here in the sixth. I think that's a smart move off Gillingham and Chinnery. If you're going to go, be a little bit, uh, not risky, but go ahead on first movement and make them execute, and now you got a, a chance to get a runner, uh, got a runner in scoring position, maybe another chance for a two-out hit and a, another run for Holy Cross. Chinnery is going to go back out on the mound second time during this at bat that he's going to go out there. As you said, he really likes to take control of the game. He'll go out there quite a bit. I think Coach Asenzo here is just do, doing the same thing right now, just taking a moment to, to talk his hitter through the new situation. He got up there with a man on first, and that's one situational hitting opportunity. And now it just changed. Guy's on second, and I, I, I'm sure he's telling him right now this is a, a good time to be aggressive, but make sure you're getting your pitch. Tassel is ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. The 2-0 is taken low, and it's three balls and no strikes. They have changed that scoring on the infield single of Cloney to an E4. Throwing error there on Wilcox, so no hit, two out error. Either way, the runner's still at second. Gillingham's 3-0 pitch over for a strike, and it's 3-1. and one. Pretty good velocity still, still into the sixth inning of the game for Gillingham. I think that's a great sign for for him moving forward into the later innings of this ball game. So it's 3-1 pitch, that one's outside, ball four. So second time that he's walked Hassel in this game. That'll put runners at first and second base. And Thomas Russo will come to the plate. And seen a couple of times, maybe pitching around Hassel a little bit, the good power there and more comfortable with the lefty-lefty matchup in Russo. I think once the guy stole, I think uh, Gillingham and Chinnery said, we're going to make sure he hits our pitch. Not that Russo's not capable. He certainly is. But I think the matchup left left here for Gillingham, a veteran, is I think he'd rather take his chances on, on this at bat. So the score, one to one. Two runners on with two outs here for Holy Cross. Now the 0-1 swings and misses at a ball down low. And quickly he's ahead of him 0-2. It adds that extra pitch right there. That breaking ball is a little tougher left, left, and you can see there Russo saw it out of his hands, but still it's it's difficult to pick up the spin and stay back on it. Gillingham's 0-2 pitch high. Changing the eye level maybe a little bit there. It's one and two. I think that's something that Navy does outstanding. We talk to our pitchers about it a lot. Sometimes they change speeds and they change locations, but they don't change the eye level quite enough, and Navy does a really nice job of that. 1-2 pitch, swinging a bouncer foul for a space side. It remains 1-2. and two. Russo 0 for 2, a couple of ground outs. As Gillingham had retired the first two batters of this inning in a row, but then a throwing error by Matthew Wilcox extended the inning. He walked Hassel after a stolen base, and now it's 1-2 and two here to Russo. A pitch. Sliced in the air down the left field line. Long run for Trent. It's a foul ball as he doesn't get there. Looks like trouble off the bat down the line. It goes foul. That really did. That drops in. That possibly is two runs away. That ball is spinning towards the corner. I don't think Trent would have been wise to die for it. You know, as he was pulling up to the line, he realized it was foul. But if that, that was off the bat, I thought that was going to be right on the chalk. 
A good at bat here by Russo after falling behind 0-2, fouling off a couple of pitches, making Gillingham work for this last out. It's the pitch there, grounder right to Wilcox at second. Bobbles it a little bit, now has to hurry to first. And he is able to make the play for the final out here in the sixth. So a little two out trouble there for Gillingham, but able to work through it. No runs in the inning, no hits. There was one error and two men left on base. The bottom of the sixth, one to one the score between Navy and Holy Cross. Go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. It's a one to one game. Navy and Holy Cross all tied up here. Game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. Best of three between the top two teams in the regular season in the Patriot League, Navy and Holy Cross. It's Brendan King coming off a one, two, three, fifth inning after giving up that run in the fourth. Back out for the sixth. It'll be three, four, five due up against him. Stephen Bourne will get things started. And pitch number 70 of the game for King is a ball. This is the part of the lineup that got the run in for Navy in the fourth. Bourne scoring the lone run so far for Navy. And he rips that one in the air out towards right, but right at Hassel who makes the catch, and there's one away. Solid contact, but right at hassle. Well, naturally, the 3-4-5 for any lineup, you're going to be looking for production, and you're going to also see some guys barrel balls a little more often than maybe the, the, the bottom third of a lineup, and Bourne did another nice job there. Got a pitch a little up in the zone, but unfortunately for him, hit it right at the right fielder. So here's Trent, first pitch to him. A pie, and it's 1-0. Seeing Daly in center, maybe a little bit deeper this time for Trent as Trent hit a ball over his head for a double in the fourth. He's pretty deep out there this time. Ben, you watch these pitchers. They're, it's as if they're just throwing a bullpen by themselves. Neither has any emotion. Very calm, very poised. It's like they're playing pitch and catch. It's real, real impressive to watch with the magnitude of the game they're pitching in. A couple of experienced starters on the mound. The pitch is a ball, and it's two and one, and such a good job by King to get out of that fourth inning, only allowing the one run. Got a perfect double play ball with the bases loaded. As he falls behind, Trent now three and one, and then comes right back in the fifth, one, two, three inning after his team scores. That almost as big as anything. Pitchers very often have to go to the well. What, what that means for, from a coaching standpoint is when there's pressure, they got to come through in a tight situation. Those, pit, those pitches seem to wear on you a little bit more. And both pitchers have really only had to have one inning like that where they've had to reach down deep and kind of grind a little bit. Those one, two, three innings where they throw eight to ten pitches almost don't take a toll on the arm at mm -hmm. all. And so it's been impressive to see how they've bounced back from those you know, not even tough innings, just kind of a challenging inning, like you said, with the one, two, three. But... A walk by either of these guys is usually a surprise for me, and I, I, uh, I just don't see it a whole lot. Pitch here to Deneen is lined out towards right. That'll be a base hit. So after the walk to Trent, Deneen has the lone RBI of the game for Navy. Singles to right field, and Navy now. Runners at first and second base and just one out. And Leland Sale, who's been swinging the bat well, come to the plate. Much like we said with Lavolo in the last inning, uh, this might be the guy Navy wants up there. He's been as clutch as anybody they've had the last few weeks in, in RBI situations. So you have Trent over at second through the first walk of the game for, from King. Deneen's at first, fifth hit of the game for Navy. And now it's Sale, and King's first pitch to him. Swing and a miss, and the count's 0-1. Sale's been on base twice in this game, one for two. Reached on a single in the second, and then the error by Thomas Russo in the fourth. Another big spot here for King to try to get out of a jam in the sixth. Looks back at Trent, a one pitch, in there for a strike, and a couple of big pitches. Jumps ahead of him, no balls and two strikes. Two pitchers pitches right there, goes Looked like he went a little bit soft first pitch down in the zone, then spots it up on, on the on the black of with the fastball on the second pitch. Not much sale could do with either of those two. Oh, two pitch, just a little outside, and it's one and two. Again, there's a purpose to that pitch. He just extended it three or four inches off the plate, hoping sale might go for a weak ground ball the second, but now I think he's got a, a couple different options here. Maybe come in hard or go go with the breaking ball here away. To 
just feel like King pitches that way. Each pitch has a purpose for the next pitch. Pitcher and batter taking their time here as King had stepped off and then Sale stepped out of the box. And now King's going to ask his catcher, Wojtek, to run back through the signs. Leland Sale, two home run week last week. Now the one-two pitch to him. Lifts that one in the air out towards shallow left. Schlick coming on. He makes the catch. And a good pitch there by King. He had Sale kind of reaching out for that one. And a weak fly ball to left field. I said I thought he had that pitch set up if he wanted to go with the breaking ball away. And, and, and it's not as if he doesn't think Sale's going to put it in play. He's just trying to keep the, the sting out of the bat, as we say. He keeps him on his front foot and just keeps him from barreling that ball. And that's exactly what a pitcher wants to do, keep, keep guys a little bit like they're on a rocking chair. Try not to get them into a rhythm where they have a good, uh, a good timing on any of the pitches they're throwing. So here's Chinnery trying to find a way out of his slump up at the plate after a one for 11 week last week. First pitch to him, it's called strike and it's 0 and 1. With runners in scoring position, when pitchers could throw backwards like this, it's, it usually leads to some success for them and King's done it two batters in a row. Everybody back and deep in the infield here with two outs in the inning. The 0 1 delivery is a bouncer towards the middle of the infield. Shortstop Lavello ranging over, flips the second. They get the force out on Deneen, and King works out of another jam here in the sixth inning. Navy got first and second, one out, but then King retires two in a row, and he's able to finish things off in another scoreless frame for him here in the sixth. No runs, one hit, two runners left on base. We'll go to the seventh. It's one to one. Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. Go to the top half of the seventh. It's a one-to-one -one game. Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. Luke Gillingham back out for his seventh inning of work. 8-9-1 do up against him. Wojtek takes a first pitch ball, and it's 1-0. Wojtek scored the lone run of the game so far for Holy Cross. One out double in the fifth. That one, a little looper through the right side for a base hit. Just a little jam shot there. And it's able to find a hole, and he has his second hit of the ball game. Lead off single. First time in this game that the leadoff batter has been on against Gillingham. Bobby and Dalio will come to the plate. Hitters love those. <laughs> Every time they line up, uh, they say they, they want him even out, and sometimes they do. But he stayed inside that baseball, curveball up in the zone, and, and kept his hands inside the ball. And Dalio will square to bunt, and the first pitch rides up and in on him, and the count's 1-0. So a bunting situation here for Indalia, trying to move that runner into scoring position for the top of the lineup, and then give Lavello an opportunity for another RBI. So we'll see if we can get it down here. As Gillingham will toss the first. This is great percentage baseball. You, you really just want to give your top of your lineup a couple shots to, to knock Boyd again. And I think uh, pushing him across a sacrifice is a, is a, good, op a good play by so Holy Cross. Squares there, lays it down. Sale will pick it up, throw to first, where they get the out. And it is a successful sacrifice bump there for Indalia. He moves Wojtek over to second base with just one out in the inning. And now Nick Lavello has the lone RBI of the game so far for Holy Cross. Got an opportunity for another. Lavello already with two hits in the game. The outfield's a little deep because of the wind, and I think that'll give uh, Holy Cross a chance to score Wojtek on a single. If they were a little shallower, I think, with a what is just an average runner. And so... Uh, on normal conditions, I think they'd have a good shot to throw him out on a single, but I feel like today they're going to take their chances on, on, a, on a base hit. First pitch strike there to Lavello. Lavello came through with that two-out RBI single in the fifth. Fastball's low, and it's one and one as Gillingham working here with the runner in scoring position. He's approaching 100 pitches now in this game. That last one was number 93 for him. The pitch, swing and a miss, had him out in front of the off-speed delivery, and it's one and two. I'd say when he's got that changeup working like that, uh, it's it's just very impressive. Threw him a breaking ball, and then comes back with that pitch that sort of fades off the plate. Right now, he's got to give Lavolo a different look. He's he's cut some pretty good looks at him, and I think that was a, a pitch he hadn't seen before. One two pitch, a pie, fastball that time, and it's two and two. It's always interesting here at Navy. You don't know when the pen is up. They had the, the uh, bullpen kind of tucked away, and so. I my, my sense is that they probably have someone stretching into or throwing at this point in the game. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. He struck him out. 
late swing on the fastball there. Maybe Lovello not expecting him to double up on the fastball, and he strikes him out. Fifth strike out of the ball game there for Gillingham. Give a lot of credit to Chinry there. He, he, he felt like going away soft and hard, set up going in hard, and you've got to get there. You've got to make sure your pitcher can execute, but Chinry had confidence, call, confidence to call that pitch, and then Gillingham executes, and Lovello really doesn't have a shot if he puts it on the glove. Here's Cam O'Neill, first pitch, ball there, and it's 1-0. and So O'Neill now with the opportunity, two outs. Runner still at second base, and he's been one of the hotter hitters on this Holy Cross team with that 22-game hitting streak coming into this one, but he's 0-3 for 3 with three flyouts. Pitch there, bounced foul, and it's 1-1. One and one. He's barreled a couple of those, though, Ben, and I think he's, his, uh, his timing's been very good, and he looks very, very confident in, 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 the, uh, in the box right now. What I like about Gillingham, every, every pitch he's miss it, missed this inning has been low. And so even, even on the balls that haven't been strikes for him, he's in the right spot. One one pitch reaches out and a soft pop-up out towards shallow center field. Curry coming on. He'll get there to make the catch for the final out of the inning. So Gillingham able to work around that leadoff single by Wojtek here in the seventh. No runs in the inning on one hit and one runner left on base. Stretch time here at Max Bishop Stadium. It's one to one. Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. You know, Navy's hoping for Knowles to get on for the obvious reason of get, getting on base, but also to get to get Curry up there with a man on base and, and maybe see King in the stretch for the first time and, and see what he can do. But this is one of those batters that, uh, that uh, you might make this inning easier and, and also make the next inning a little easier if he can get, you know, get Curry and split up the middle of the lineup going into the eighth. Set ball ripped foul, so it's one and one. So Gillingham get through seven innings of one run ball. He's at 99 pitches now in this game. King after that last pitch, that was his 88th pitch of the game with one out here in the seventh. Maybe trying to make him work a little bit here. And Knowles will take that ball for a strike. We can't quite see the bullpen, but we know that line drive foul, someone came out of the bullpen and made the play, <laughs> so maybe someone is up for Holy Cross. My sense is that both teams would have their, uh, their short relievers either stretching or pretty hot at this point uh, with their pitch counts getting close to 100. Another foul ball there, and it's one and two, and a little bit of rain, I think, starting to pick up here. Fortunately, we're outdoors, Ben, so that's <laughs> going to be nice for us. <laughs> One, two, pitch. Hit softly right to second. O'Neill has it, tosses the first, and it's two quick outs here for King to begin the seventh inning. Got this nice 10 above us protecting us from the elements. Pitchers are making it a little easier on us. That we're, that in case it rains, we won't be out here quite as long. Again, that's a big out for King. Turning the lineup over, two outs for Curry. Just makes us, uh, he's able to attack right here against Curry as opposed to maybe having to be a little bit more uh, careful with what he would throw to him. You can see some of the umbrellas popping up in the stands now. Fans flipping some hoods on, braving the elements as are we with two outs here on the bottom of the seventh inning. And a one and one count here to Curry. Curry hitless so far in the game. 0 for three, two flyouts and a ground out to short. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch is hitting the air out towards deep right field. Hassel, though, playing deep and a few feet shy of the warning track is there to make the catch, and King has himself another 1-2-3 inning. Third time in the game, the King has set the side down in order. Hey, fans, go beyond CampusInsiders.com. Watch live games on your TV at home with, campus, with the Campus Insiders channel. You watch it on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, Roku, or Xbox One. Catch Patriot League sports every day on Campus Insiders. It's a first pitch strike there from Gillingham and Chinnery right out to the mound here. It'll be 3-4-5 here in the eighth inning. So that was pitch number 100 of the ball game for Gillingham. They're going to leave him in to try to get through the middle of the Holy Cross lineup here in a 1-1 one -one game here on the top half of the eighth inning. And the rain picking up a bit here as it does begin to throw a little bit harder. So... Keep an eye on the pitchers gripping the ball and grounders in the infield as well. As that ball grounded right through the middle of the infield for a base hit as Critelli has his first hit of the ball game, a leadoff single to begin things here in the top half of the eighth inning. The go-ahead run on base here for the second straight inning for Holy Cross. 
Yeah, the margin for error is not very great when you're a pitcher. That that first changeup was located, second one up in the zone just a little bit, and, and the guy's able to barrel it and, and put it up the middle for, for a single. So leadoff runner on for the second straight in. They are going to bunt with Schlick as he bunts it down the first baseline. Sale thought about a throw to second, but takes the shore out over at first. And so the eighth inning begins the exact same way as the seventh inning. Leadoff single, sack bunt. Now a couple of opportunities here for Holy Cross to try to knock in that go-ahead run. We'll have Cloney up at the plate with one out and then Hassel to follow. Coach Sen has certainly shown some confidence in the freshman willing to bunt his four-hole hitter to get Cloney into an RBI situation. First pitch to Cloney is high and the count's 1-0. Cloney's 0 for 3 in this game. He reached on an error in the sixth, then stole a base but was stranded at second base. That's a strike, and it's one and one. Gillingham was able to strand a runner in scoring position in the sixth and in the seventh, and trying to do so again here in the eighth inning. Fastball outside, and it's two and one. Again, fourth time through the lineup for these pitchers is really a challenge. They're both around 100 pitches. This is where they really reach down deep, and I don't know if it's a much about, as much about stuff as it is about their sort of their guile and their toughness right now to get through the lineup this fourth time. Fouled off there, and it's two and two. Got a lefty-lefty matchup here. Hassel on deck is a right-handed batter. And he thought with Gillingham now approaching 110 pitches, potentially could be the last batter of the ball game for him. Yeah, I think the only thing they may do if they're fortunate to get this out, they, two, could, two. they could potentially walk Hassel and leave leave Gillingham in to go left, left versus Russo as well. But uh, a lot would be a lot would be decided based on how this this particular at bat plays out. So it's three balls and two strikes. Is Cloney a good take there? Able to lay off that one in the dirt. Now here's the payoff pitch. Ball four. He walked him. Gillingham kind of throws the hands up. He thought it was a strike. Instead, it's his third walk of the game. Runners at first and second now with one out. So we'll take a look at that pitch again and maybe a little bit outside or up in the zone. Pretty close. I think the close. interesting thing I saw there was I don't see Gillingham show emotion, so I think he, he believed that was there. And I've watched him pitch for four years. I'm not sure I've even seen him raise, raise an arm or, or sh shrug a shoulder like that before. First pitch to Hassel, he gets that one over for a strike and it's 0-1. So they will let Gillingham face Hassel here. He's walked him twice so far in this game. Other time up in the fourth, he struck him out. Two on, one out. Top of the eighth inning, tie game, one to one. Pitch way high and away. That was pitch number 111 for Luke Gillingham. You get the sense Gillingham probably told the coaches, I, I want this ball game, and I think they're they're trusting their senior who, who's gotten them to this point in the season. That pitch grounded right to third. Knowles has it. He'll go to second for one. The relay to first pull sail off the bag. Couldn't quite turn the double play there. It'll be five to four on the fielder's choice, but Critelli moves to third, Cloney to second, and now two runners in scoring position with two outs here in the eighth. Got the left-on-left -left matchup with Russo. That play was a little off timing-wise right from the beginning, right, right from Knowles and to Wilcox. They both didn't have the rhythm into their double play like I think they'd like to. Uh, if that was turned crisply, I think they have a chance to turn, turn two on that play. First pitch swinging grounded right to short, and on one pitch, Gillingham is able to get out of the jam here in the eighth inning. No runs here in the eighth inning for Holy Cross on one hit and two runners left on base. We'll head to the bottom half of the eighth inning. It's one to one, Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. So three straight innings that Luke Gillingham is able to strand a runner in scoring position in the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth as he at 112 pitches is through eight innings of one run ball, but on the other side, King has been equal to the task, seven innings of one run ball. So it's one to one here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two, three, four, do up for Navy as Travis Blue, the shortstop, will lead things off. And King at 94 pitches, ready to go to work. And the first pitch is bunted at the plate. And the home plate umpire is going to say it hit him when he was still in the box. So just the foul ball. I have to be honest, I've never seen a hitter quite quick enough to bunt it and 
get out of the box to be hit by that ball unless it's unless it's down the line a little bit. Usually they come right up into your body, as you'll see there, right up into his body before he started moving. And it's also a super difficult call for that umpire right where he's where, right where he's positioned on this play. Crew chief Gregory Walls, a little chat here with Holy Cross head coach. That was closer than most, but I still believe he, you know, it's really difficult to get a full step out of that box on that bunt. But Coach Asenzo does what probably most coaches will do is just ask for a little help, see if they can get a different look at it. Every out matters right here. A little bit of an extended chat, and now going back for another word here with Gregory Walls. A little bit of a delay. Wonder if this affects his pitcher at all as well on the mound here, having to wait through a couple extra words that he wanted to get in. I think King will be okay. He's, he seemed to, to weather weather the storm literally the last two days and, and an extra 30 seconds there. Look at him. He's kind of taking a deep breath, looking at his defense and ready to attack. So 0 and 1 here to Blue. That's a strike and quickly it's 0 and 2 to him. Blue, Bourne and Trent here in the eighth inning. Stephen Bourne on deck has scored the lone run of the game for Navy. 2 is high and it's 1 and 2, but such a well-pitched game on both sides. You have Gillingham, the senior, on one side, 112 pitches, gets himself through eight innings, getting out of jams. Last three innings in the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th, and also such a good job after that game from last week to bounce back with this outing. If I circle back to the top of the inning for a moment, those were two enormous pitches. Got two ground balls there with, with runners in scoring position and really hitting the edge of your limit of, on your pitch count. And let me be, be the first one to, to, to mention that we're not sad in the Patriot League, the opponent, opposing coaches, that he's a senior and we won't have to see him the next, next few years. He's just been a dominant arm for four years and just show, showing today why he's been the two-time pitcher of the year. 2-2 two, two now to Blue reaches out, soft grounder to short. Lavello has that one, has to hurry to first, and it's just in time to get Blue. Blue thought he had beaten it. And try to get a second look at this one. At first glance, I, I may agree with uh, Blue there. That was a really bang, bang play. Uh, Lavello had to hold back a little bit to get the second high hop, and, and by doing so, he became a little flat-footed, gave, gave Blue a chance to get down the line a little bit, and boy, that was bang, bang at first. So here's Stephen Bourne. First pitch to him, outside, and it's 1-0. and It's Bourne one for three, Singleton scored a run in the fourth inning. Bats with the bases clear and one out. And King is now up over 100 pitches as well. He's at 102 with the count two balls and no strikes. And three straight pitches out of the zone. Here to Bourne, and can't see down into the Holy Cross bullpen, but it does look like there's some movement there. Imagine that there is some action there with their starter up over 100 pitches. As Bourne taking all the way and takes a strike, and it's three and one. Good hitters count here for Bourne. This is the type of pitch he, he probably wants to, to zone it up to try to drive a gap on this on this particular pitch. Big cut there by Bourne. Ball a little bit down in the zone, and now it's full. Not sure if you, you noticed that, but it looked like King reached back a little bit on that one, and maybe one of the better fastballs he's thrown in the last few innings. Payoff pitch fouled off. I know he completed his game up at Lehigh versus us, and the velocity on his last pitch happened to be the hardest pitch he threw the entire game, so that shows a very well-conditioned pitcher who kind of can pace himself throughout the entire game. Again, the 3-2, again fouled off. Good battle here between Bourne and King. I mentioned earlier, pitchers who can go 3-0 and come back, those are those are your true aces, and he's done that a number of times as well as Gillingham today. Again, the 3-2, swinging a foul tip into the glove of the catcher as he comes back to get him. Fourth strikeout of the ball game for King. Now two outs here in the eighth. King doesn't usually have Im impressive strikeout numbers. He won't have a 14 or a 12. But boy, when he needs that strikeout, he, he finds a way to make that pitch. And I think that's how he's able to get deep in the games. He's efficient like, like he is today, just at 100 to get into the eighth inning. 
Trent fouls off the first pitch. Trent coming off that big weekend last weekend. One for two in this game, the double in the fourth. Helps set up the first run of the game and a walk. And quickly it's 0-2 here to Sean Trent, his king. One, two, three inning in the seventh. Now looking for a one, two, three inning here in the eighth. There's the pitch, swinging a grounder right to short. Lavello has that one, tosses the first, and it's in time. And Brendan King has retired eight batters in a row and another one, two, three inning for him here in the eighth. No runs, hits, errors, nobody left on base. We'll go to the ninth. It's one to one, Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. Hey fans, Campus Insiders will stream the Air Force Commencement Ceremony with President Obama addressing the 58th graduating class on Thursday, June 1st at 10 a.m. Central Time. Visit CampusInsiders.com for live coverage of the 2016 Air Force Commencement Ceremony. It's Gillingham back out for the ninth. There was a first pitch strike and now the pitch by Wojtek popped up on the infield right side. It's Sale underneath it and a couple of readjustments. Not pretty, but he makes the catch, and there's one away here in the ninth. I was about to comment how Sales had a lot of time in the outfield. He'd probably <laughs> probably make that look easy, but that was way major league pop-up, way up there, and you could see Sale at the last minute there just trying to hang with it. So Gillingham started the inning with 112 pitches, comes back out for the ninth, gets the first out, and Dahlia trying to bunt and bunts right through it, and the count is 0-1. Career high for Gillingham is 120 pitches. Actually did that against Holy Cross last year. Eight shutout innings in that one. Here he's pitching into the ninth. That one a chopper over the mound to short. Charging in is blue bobbles it, won't have a play. And a runner's aboard here in the ninth inning. Another good pitch there by Gillingham. Got and deal you out in front. Uh, difficult chance for blue, but again, as we said a couple times today, these are high-level players. I'm sure he expected to make that play, and it's uh, the kind of play you want to make in a championship-type type environment. And it will be an E6 there on the play. So instead of two outs and nobody on base, it's one out and a runner at first in the top of the lineup. Nick Lavello will come to the plate, and Gillingham will toss the first. It's a good time for Holy Cross to run right here. They, they took a chance on first movement last time with Gillingham. He made the adjustment right there just to try to try to check a little bit. Pitch called a strike, and it's 0-1. Dahlia did lead the team in stolen bases. He had eight of them in 11 attempts this season. So good speed over there at first base. Gillingham's pitch, so weak grounder to short. Blue has it. He'll go to second for one, the relay to first. No chance to get Lavello there, but they do get the lead runner. Six to four on the fielder's choice. Lavello replaces in Dahlia over at first base. And there's two away, and here's Cam O'Neill, who's flied out four times so far in this game. I'll tell you, Gillingham went to the slide step there. I don't see him do that very often, try to take the, the uh, stolen base opportunity out of play. And Blue really hung with that ball. That ball took a little bit of a high hop there, and that wasn't a two ball off the bat. So getting that out at second was pivotal. I give him a lot of credit because after a tough play, sure enough, that ball finds you the very next time, and he makes a difficult chance on that second one and gets the out at second. And we are going to have a mound visit here. Don't believe it will be the end of the afternoon for Gillingham as the slow walk out to the mound from Navy's pitching coach. And Adrian Chinnery is also going to go out and join the conference with a runner at first base and two outs. Bobby, Gap Bobby Applegate out there just checking on Gillingham, maybe to make sure that he has something left here for Cam O'Neill at 118 pitches now in this game, but really no, no good contact against him here in this inning so far. That's correct. I think the, the conversation is that O'Neill's had some pretty good swings off him. What, what did he hit? How are we going to set him up here? If you looked at the body language of Gillingham, he was not coming out of that game. <laughs> uh, he was talking to coach, looking him in the eye, and asking for the opportunity as a senior to get his team to the bottom of the ninth. So uh, I'd have a hard time pulling him out right here as well if I was the coach. This is this is your horse, and boy, he's done a great job to this point. So Lavello at first. Here's O'Neill. First pitch fastball in there for a strike, and Gillingham still seems to have pretty good velocity here into the ninth. Nice lob pop there on the first pitch. It's all going to come down to location on the on this on this last out here. He's got to get the guy to put the ball on the ground. 
pitch there. Fastball close to the same spot. Didn't get the call that time, and it's one and one. O'Neill. But a location he'd be happy with. That's a spot where he's going to get a ground ball likely on, on, that, on that pitch. O'Neill, four flyouts, two to center, two to left. That one swing and a miss at a ball down low, and now he's got him one and two. Staying down in the zone, first two pitches, fastball goes off speed there. Change eye level, as we talked about a couple times earlier today. Now he has an opportunity, I think, to go with several different pitches. Just depends on what Shinry sees as the best pitch to potentially put him away. One, two pitch now, swing and a ball fouled off. Right side, and it remains one and two. Impressive swing there. He was, he was almost jammed, and he drove that ball out over the right field fence foul. That's very, very quick hands by O'Neill. Lovello's at first here. Sale holds him on. Now the one-two pitch reaches out and pops that one up foul and again out of play. A good hitter spoils good pitches and tries to get to the one he could potentially drive. Holy Cross did a great job against us with that earlier in the season. They had a couple 10-pitch at-bats that resulted in RBI hits, and O'Neill just spoiled two pretty good pitches by Gillingham. Everybody in the outfield very deep here for Navy. Runner going, one, two, pitch is a ball. Throw down to second is in time. He got him. Looked like Lavello got a pretty good jump off of first base and Chinnery able to gun him down there for the final out here in the ninth inning. So Gillingham ends up facing the minimum here in the ninth. No runs, no hits, there was one error and nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. One to one, Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. Half of the ninth inning, it's one to one. Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. Ben Gordon Goldstein, along with me, Lehigh head coach Sean Leary, as Connor Deneen will lead things off against Brendan King here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. So it'll be Deneen, Sale, and Chinnery here for Navy. Gillingham able to get through nine innings of one run ball. King trying to do the same to get it to extras. Two quick strikes there on Deneen. We talked at the open about the two, two shining stars in our league on the mound, and boy, have they gone out and showcased to the rest of the country today uh, what kind of what kind of uh, what kind of pitchers they are and what kind of competitors competitors they are to go to in, go into a nine inning game one to one with the two best teams playing. It's been impressive. Actually, it's been fun for us to watch just because uh, we don't have to bat today. We just <laughs> get to get to talk about it. Oh, two pitch now way high and away, and it's one and two. Deneen does have the lone RBI of the game for Navy. That was that RBI ground out back in the fourth inning when Navy had second and third with nobody out. They got one run in, but King was able to get out of that jam. And any more coming in is the one, two, just outside, and it's two and two. When these pitchers have missed, they have missed in good locations for for the um, for themselves. They're not pitches that are gonna, that they could get hurt with. Pitch up high and Deneen good at bat. Fell behind 0-2. It's taken three in a row out of the zone and now has worked it back to full. As King has walked just one batter so far in this game, he also hit Chinnery. Now his payoff pitch fouled off. Talked about Gillingham, 124 pitches through nine innings. King is. Now at 117 pitches. Payoff pitch again fouled off. Deneen battling here and King certainly familiar with going this deep into a game. 126 pitches against your squad last week. And still sharp. I mean, he's competing right here. T two guys who want to win a game for their team and he's throwing strikes and Deneen's just fouling them off. One another, after another. <laughs> another foul ball there. Three straight foul balls here. As coaches, you want to see kids compete. And right now, we're watching two teams compete at a high level, and no one's really giving in. It's just someone's going to execute one extra play, and they're going to probably line up with, with the win in the ballgame. Again, the payoff pitch, and again, hit foul. Slice that one down into the left field corner. Five foul balls in a row now for Deneen. Since the count has run full long at bat here to start the bottom half of the ninth inning, really putting King to the test. That pitch misses high and away. Really nice job by Deneen at the plate. 
spoiling a number of good pitches, and then finally King missed with one, and the leadoff batter for Navy is aboard to start things here in the ninth. Sometimes game within the game right there is Zanid spoils four or five fastballs and, and King goes to the breaking ball right there. And sometimes late in the game, sometimes that's a tougher field pitch. Uh, but he forced him to ha try something different. And to Zanid's credit, tremendous battle won there by the hitter. So we'll see if Sale is up there bunting to try to move the runner into scoring position here for Navy. He does square early first pitch. He bunts it back to the screen. And the count is 0-1. Sale two sack bunts this season with Deneen, who runs pretty well over at first base. Situation where you try to move the go-ahead run, potential game-winning run into scoring position for Chinnery, but also opens first base open, and Chinnery may not see a pitch. It's very likely Wilcox would hit if he gets his bunt down. They would probably put, the, uh, probably put Chinnery on. Not bunting that time, and Sale lines that one through the left side for a base hit. On to second is Deneen. Sale to like the first. I, I, I don't think uh, Sale's bunted a whole lot in his career, and I often am confronted with that situation. Last year at Navy, my four-hole hitter's up in the championship game, and boy, everybody wanted me to bunt. He wasn't my best bunter, and so you try to roll the dice a little bit and let a good hitter hit, and uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but Sale did not look comfortable in that first attempt and uh, you know gets a chance to hit right there, and I think maybe King was thinking sacrifice bunt, was looking to throw a strike, and to Sale's credit, he gets the job done. So first and second, nobody out. Mound visit here. Haven't seen a signal to the bullpen. I, my, my gut says Coach D is going to do the same thing Coach Costi did, uh, is leave his horse in there. And, and, and what he's probably talking about is bunt execution and, and a bunt defense right here. Um, and costi has got the same decision to make here. Do I bunt one of my clutch hitters, or do I give him a chance with a runner in scoring position to, to, uh, to win the ball game? I, th I think either way, there's 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 merit, uh, but Chinnery's only downside is, is his ability to hit in a double play, so I think they may be leaning towards a bunt. So Chinnery's 0 for 2 in this one. He hasn't really swung it all that well over the last couple of weeks, and then you have Wilcox waiting on deck, who is hitless so far in the Patriot League tournament. But you have first and second with nobody out as the conference on the mound breaks up. The corner infielders are playing in, expecting the bunt from Chinnery. Back in the middle of the infield, Short stop, sticking closer to Deneen there at second base. Now the wheel play is on. Chinnery bunts it back to the pitcher's mound. They're going to try to go to third, and they get the lead runner there. Not a good bunt by Chinnery. Back to the mound. It'll be a fielder's choice there. Deneen forced out at third, and there's one away. Is sale to second, Chinnery to first. And now you also take the speed off the base spats as well as both Sale and Shinnery do not run all that well. And so give, give nicely. Coach credit there. Coach Desenzo went out there and put on a, I wouldn't consider a risky play, but it's a play that we may have to run five times a year at most, and in the most critical moment of the season, Holy Cross was able to execute. As you see Deneen there diving in and out at third base, and now it's Wilcox, the freshman, first pitch swinging, and he pops that one up on the infield. Infield fly rule in effect as the second baseman O'Neill makes the catch. And just like that, it goes from first and second, nobody out, to first and second, two outs on just two pitches. And now it's up to Logan Knowles. These are the times I'm, I'm glad to be in the booth, not having to make some of these decisions. <laughs> Uh, because you're, you're really doing what's best for your personnel. You're not necessarily playing the percentages. You're trying to do what you think your guys can do. And quite frankly, uh, you've got to execute there. First pitch to Knowles is a ball, and it's 1-0. and So Sale at second, game-winning run. Chinnery doesn't matter much at first. Pretty shallow in the outfield, trying to give themselves a chance on a play at the plate if Knowles is able to come up with the base hit. Pitch is low, and now it's two balls and no strikes. And got Robert Curry 0 for Curry 0 for 4, waiting on deck here, hoping for an opportunity. You have to think King is, is attacking Knowles here. He doesn't want to go to the senior leader, uh, Curry, with the bases loaded. Pitch gets that one over for a strike, and it's two balls and one strike. His next pitch is going to be number 130 in the game for King. Looks back at Sale, to one pitch, low, and it's three balls and one strike. 
He's already walked Deneen in this inning. Two walks total in the game. He's also hit a batter. And now three balls and one strike the count. King sets in the pitch, gets it over at the knees for a strike. Now the runners will get a head start here. Three balls and two strikes, two outs. Sale and Chinnery will be off on the pitch. Bottom half of the ninth inning in a 1-1 game. King sets and will look back to second. Trying to make sure that Sale doesn't get too good a jump off of there, but now with him running, it's gonna be tough for the outfielders if Knowles does get one through the infield. The set, 3-2 pitch, runners going, grounded foul. Can't ask for much more here in the first game of the Patriot League Championship Series. It tr truly has been a great game uh, to, see, to see it come down to potentially a pitch here in the last inning. Uh, with the runners moving here, Knowles really just has to try to stay inside of baseball. I think his best Best shot is to go to left, but we'll see We see where King sets him up here. He sets runners go, 3-2 pitch, swing and a miss. He struck him out, and a big fist pump from King there on the mound to get out of the jam here in the ninth inning. Navy at first and second with nobody out here in the ninth inning, and King with strikeout number five gets out of the jam here in the inning. We'll head to extra innings here in game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. All tied up one to one between Navy and Holy Cross. Ben Gordon Goldstein, Sean Leary back with you. Game one today scheduled tomorrow to be game two of the Patriot League Championship Series. And if necessary, game three as well tomorrow to be a noon first pitch. Right now the team's battling here in extra innings. Sam Sorensen, the new pitcher into the game for Navy. He'll have to deal with 2-3-4 in the Holy Cross lineup. Cam O'Neill, Anthony Critelli, and Bill Schlick as Luke Gillingham done after nine innings of one run ball and tremendous from both starter in this game. That one has popped up down the left field line in foul territory. Knowles going over, called off by Blue, and he'll make the catch. Nice play there by Blue. He had a long way to go, reaching back behind him as he almost overran that ball a little bit. And yeah, That's a shortstop ball. When it's hit down the left field line, it's going to curl back. The third baseman's angle is really not good on that when it's starting to tail back. And Travis Blue, from the moment that ball was hit, he had a beeline towards it and took, it, took the... Uh, took command of that right away and actually as you said he almost overran it but that's what you're supposed to get to a spot and and then look up as you see the replay there is blue going over and the reach back and makes it look easy there and also had to run through a little bit of a puddle there but makes the play <laughs> that got dist not distract him a little bit but he knew he had to kind of chop his feet a little bit there at the end to keep his footing it's first pitch ball to Critelli, so now the 1-0. Also misses for a ball, and it's 2-0. Sorensen, 22 games on the season, 3-2, a 1-9-1 earned run average. 37 and two-thirds innings, 37 strikeouts, eight walks. And that pitch, a grounder right to third. Knowles playing up the line. It's grounded right to him. Couple of steps towards first, and Sorensen faces two batters and has two outs here in the 10th inning. That'll bring up the cleanup batter, Schlick. Nice job by Knowles. He's playing very deep, trying to take the double away. It's difficult to play that deep for a lot of players. And so when he got that ball and it, before Cretelli's out of the box, he took his time, kind of crow hopped a little bit, collected himself to make that long throw. That was a really nice play. Sorensen's first pitch to Schlick bounces up there and skips past everybody. It's 1-0. and Schlick 0 for 3. Had a sack button in the eighth inning that moved the runner into scoring position with one out, but... Holy Cross opportunities, seven, eight, and nine. Did not score any of those innings against Gillingham. And now it's Sorensen in the second straight batter. He falls behind two and zero. If you're Holy Cross, you're certainly glad not to see Gillingham back out there. He's uh, had such an outstanding career, but now you face the first team All-League reliever uh, coming out of the pen. Not going to get a whole lot easier. Goes off speed behind two and zero and has about in front two and one. Great season for the senior Sorensen. He had six saves as well. This one, obviously, he's hoping he'll be able to pick up the win in game one. Two one low, and it's three and one. Did only have 
eight walks in the regular season, so normally pretty good command, but again, he's fallen behind a couple of hitters here. Able to get Critelli. That pitch bounced foul, and now it's full, three and two. Maybe we'll have the top of the lineup to up in their half of the 10th inning. Curry and Blue are combined 0 for 8 in this game to begin things, but likely will not have to deal with King. Here's Sorensen trying to get through the top half of the inning. Here's his payoff pitch, swinging a one hopper over to short. Blue able to field it and throw to first. A nice play. That one almost ate him up a little bit there at shortstop, but he was able to stay with it, and Sorensen has himself a 1 2 3 10th inning. No runs, hits, errors, nobody left on base. On to the bottom half of the 10th inning. It's 1 to 1, Navy and Holy Cross all tied up. Hey fans, you can relive their favorite Patriot League schools games from the 2015 season by visiting PatriotLeague.tv and clicking on the Patriot League video archive link. Again, that is PatriotLeague.tv on CampusInsiders.com as well. So we go to the bottom half of the 10th inning. Brendan King matching Luke Gillingham, nine innings from each starting pitcher, and he is done after 133 pitches in this game, and both King and Gillingham only surrendering one run apiece. Holy Cross will dip into the bullpen for the first time. It'll be the right-hander, Drew Cravero, entering his 26th game of the season. Six and two, a 3-1-0. Earned run average, 49 and a third innings of work on the season for him. Struck out 48, walked 20. He'll have to deal with the top of the lineup here in the bottom of the 10th. Robert Curry leads things off, and it's a first pitch ball. It's a challenge for both relievers coming in after dominant performances by the starters and really no margin for error. So both give, give Sorensen credit in the top half and we'll see what Cravero has to offer here in the bottom half. First two pitches missing here to Curry. Curry 0 for 4. Three fly outs. Struck it well a couple of times. That last at bat in the seventh hit it well. Hasseled again here is playing very deep out there in right field. Fastball over there and it's 2 and 1. Good at bat by by the senior leader right there. He, he he's two and zero, and he's got a new reliever in there, and he probably knows he's getting a fastball, but he's saying I, I got to get on base any way I can, and maybe I can work a walk. Two one, a bouncer towards the middle of the infield. Curry stumbled coming out of the box, so plenty of time for Lavello. He's able to get him, and Curry now zero for five in the game. That's the first out here in the tenth inning, and Travis Blue coming to the plate. Navy had that great opportunity in the bottom half of the ninth inning to try to walk it off. First and second, nobody out. But then Chinnery couldn't get a successful bunt down as he bunted it right back to King, who got the lead runner at third. And then King got Wilcox and Knowles to finish off the game, finish off the inning. And now it's Blue batting. First pitch, change up out in front of it, and it's 0-1. And Coley Cross has to be satisfied with how they're controlling the top top part of this lineup to see Blue and Curry 0 for 9. I don't think that happens very often over the course of the season. Pitch there. Misses inside. Cavero's got a pretty pretty unique 12-6 type of break on that pitch. And that may have even been a little different look for the umpire seeing that for the first time. There's the 1-1 one, one pitch, a bouncer right to second. O'Neill will wait back on it, throw to first. And Cravero, a couple of easy outs here to begin the 10th. They saw Sorensen on the other side, 1-2-3 inning, and Cravero trying to do the same. Maybe we will play two today after all. We'll just roll through 18 in this <laughs> game for where they're going. Here's Stephen Bourne, one for four. He scored the only Navy run of the game. Way back in the fourth inning. First pitch low to him, and it's 1-0. and On the Holy Cross side, love to see the middle of the lineup for Navy batting with nobody on base. Two outs and nobody on base here for Bourne. Pitch there is swung on and hit in the air, deep to right field. Hassel going back to the track. It's gone! A walk-off home run for Stephen Bourne with two outs in the bottom half of the 10th inning. 
and Navy has taken game one of the Patriot League Championship Series. Stunning end to this game. I don't think we saw that coming with it with how not many balls have been driven. That was that ball hit off the bat looked like it had a pretty good shot, but boy, for how terrific the pitching was to, to see an offensive uh, heroics at the end was was a little bit of a surprise. But give Stephen Bourne credit. That's that was as clutch as clutch can be, walking it off in the tenth inning. Bourne had this hit in the fourth inning and then scored the only run of the game for Navy until now. And here, 1-0 pitch in the bottom half of the 10th inning, two outs, base is empty, and Bourne just crushes it to right center field over that 372 sign there in right center field. No doubt about that one, and Navy takes game one here, the Patriot League Championship Series again by that final score of 2-1. to one. So